to a conquering mega regal. Alright guys, I have to do a little little voice voicey intro here um to explain what's going on. So I've been uh, um messing around with Lost Fame casting for for a little while. Um tried making a bunch of components for the vibrating concrete table um with with this method. But use super glue and uh you know either way uh, at the same time i was trying to make a bottle just out of curiosity and uh while i didn't need the components for the bench anymore i ended up having about six attempts at making a bottle i'm using a vibrator to get the sand to fill up the shoulders of the bottle um i had played around with coatings as well um they work really nicely but in the end i was having so many attempts that i gave up because it takes quite a long time for the coatings to dry anyway here's the uh the final successful bottle casting and uh, i hope you enjoy it okay I, I have lost count completely now and it's been a while since uh, uh the last try so um six is this six I don't know. it doesn't matter look um i've gone with a completely different approach to the feeder um and i've used um what uh much lower density uh, expanded polystyrene rather than the slightly higher density extruded polystyrene uh, which we've used to the bottle still yeah so we'll see we'll see what that does um, also I've not done any hot wire cutting on this bottle I did it all with a scalpel and a straight edge uh, and I've got my gaps much tighter um, so I did use um, hot glue uh, I haven't used much of it at all, and yeah, I've, I think I've got good, much better joints than I had done before. But it is, it's much more accurate, I think. Um, I, maybe I'll have to uh, have a look at producing a better hot wire cutter in the future, but um, or, or doing things with machining the foam instead of instead of trying to hot wire cut it. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get this buried in the sand, and and uh, we'll also use the heat gun this time, the, sorry, the temperature probe, laser temperature probe to um, have a little check how hot our metal is, which is something I should have been doing from the start, that it could conceivably be the cause of half of my problems here, uh, not all of them, but uh, <laughs> you know, some of them, either way, let's, let's give it a go and see what happens. This is really warm. This is above 800 C now. I'm not sure that is an F. I'm all right going metric and imperial, but not with temperatures. It's only ever C. Only ever the centigrades. Ah. Oh. Okay. Something happened. Something definitely happened there. <laughs> yep, something happened. Oh, I wonder if it's something good. We'll have to wait and find out. Give it a couple of minutes. Excitement's over. Yeah, so um, I mean, I think fourteen hundred to sixteen hundred degrees Fahrenheit is where you want to be casting. So 
if you're having problems with uh, you know the mould not um, what have I done with this camera today hey? if the mould's not filling up or you're not getting detail or whatever I think generally people go a bit hotter um, especially with a lost foam because you've got to burn burn stuff out haven't you and you know if the metal's got to travel a long way and there's not much of it then um, it needs to be nice and hot doesn't it <laughs> what are we saying so so I can't believe I've ever been much under the sort of 800 degrees centigrade I mean, it's so much easier for me to work at centigrade isn't it which is over 1600 degrees Fahrenheit, I think, um, and over what you're meant to be casting at. Uh, but it depends on the alloy as well, and I've only ever used mystery metal. So, um, so what? All I can do is say that I should be up there at the uh, <laughs> at the at the top end this time. Um, so, you know, if I've had any problems, I doubt it's going to be. Because the metal isn't hot enough, yeah. Oh, oh, this looks good. This looks good. It looks very good. I'll, I'll almost be upset if I've actually uh, done it this time. Uh, I've been enjoying messing around. Yeah, this has actually worked. This has actually worked. Okay. Okay. It's interesting. Obviously, for what I'm doing, uh, this top sprue seems to have worked a lot better. That's a lot of sand that came out of there. Whether we've got a uh, good and true reproduction on the inside is a different matter entirely. We've bloody done it, look. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I've had a peep inside there. I mean, actually, the, the water, can you see the little air bubbles there? Um, yeah, it, it appears to be a fairly decent inside. I'm half tempted to cut it just to see what's happened in the shoulders because that's the real test. Look, the whole point of this was to mess around with the coating and vibrating the sand. Um, coating was good, although I gave up on that just purely because of the time constraints. You know, it wasn't wasn't conducive to a high rate of experimentation, was it? If I had to wait a while before each one went off. Um, I've learnt some important lessons with the making of the pattern uh, as far as how I cut it and work with it is concerned. And, uh, and yeah, the vibration absolutely works amazingly. Um, I'd only ever done lost foam casting just by pouring loose sand in and... Um, at best, what I would have had would would have been um, something with very little internal capacity because the sand would have <laughs> would have just sand dunes inside there like an hourglass almost, you know, and it would have had shoulders an inch thick. Uh, but and at worst, it would have collapsed. This is this has worked very nicely. This is this is excellent. This is absolutely fantastic experiment. Let's uh, let's clean it up a bit and. Um, you know, as we've come this far, we might as well make a nice bottle and stick a cork in it, just for shits and giggles. So there we go. <laughs> Look, my little bottle uh, with the uh, with the sprue cleaned off. Hey, it's nay a thing of beauty, lads, but uh, it it does a bottle. You know, there's water in there right now. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't even come out the cork hole, does it? Hey. Oh, <laughs> all right. Okay, okay. I couldn't get my uh, my taper reamer in there far enough. It bottomed out. Um, 
I even considered like hacking the end off it, but no, it's not really worth it, is it? So um, look, this is this has been fun, fun little experiment. Um, but yeah, and, and a, a lot of learnings done. Um, if you're going to do lost foam casting, I reckon uh, you know getting some vibration on the job is uh, is is about the best way to progress past the uh, basic shapes. Um, and and definitely check out Jerry Coalfield, Jerry Jerry Coalfield, C O W L. And I've got to check because I really enjoy this channel. Let me let me just find it. Kelly, Kelly Coalfield, uh, Kelly Coalfield. Can you read that? Uh, he's not got a you know massive channel. Look at the, some of the stuff he makes. Awesome. Yeah, he's just a. Uh, uh, look 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 at his work with the uh, the V8 inlet manifold for. Uh, yeah, the guy's the guy's flipping amazing, but he he puts vacuum on his stuff and all, um, so he he does the vibration and vacuums the sand, puts a vacuum on the on the sand as he's as he's pouring, um, really really beautiful work that he does. Um, yeah. So what? Cheers, mate. Anyway, for your for your pins and tips, I will endeavour to progress. <laughs> I'll. I'll get to the point where I'm, I'm not making any more progress with vibration and then maybe I'll look at uh, putting a vacuum on my bits too but yeah for now that's that's the end of the experimentation and uh, we'll move on to making useful bits I suppose won't we we've got to make a couple of bits we've got to make a, another pulley we don't really have to but I want to because um, you know the beautiful thing about this is uh, I can get close enough to finish dimensions for a uh, for a pulley that I wouldn't have to put it in a lathe. I'd have to bore bore out the center with a with a rema with a drill and a rema perhaps and you know uh, the the success of the project would come down to how uh, how well I can I can center um, the pulley on the on the drill press but um, you know definitely the the groove for the for the pulley would be absolutely fine if I can, you know, get get the sort of dimensional stability that, you know, I should be able to get with this method, yeah? So I can make a sort of 10 inch pulley, whereas previously I, I, I you know, I'd only get up, up to about 8 inches on the lathe because I can't swing any more than that, yeah? Anyway, alright, I hope you enjoyed this. There's my little bottle. Um, it's got a little cork in there, look. Let's, uh, let's see what this aluminized water yeah exactly as you'd expect taste of um sand with uh polyester poly polystyrene dissolved in it yeah <laughs> take it easy folks hey see you later bye bye